From a new channel, it's Fletch here with a Fletch Talks football episode. And today, the topic is the very hotly debated VAR system. Now, VAR has had a pretty busy week this week. First, it was announced that the system will make history by being involved in this summer's upcoming World Cup in Russia. And then it was again under the microscope this weekend as it was used during the Liverpool vs West Bromwich Albion FA Cup 4th round fixture in which the Baggies won 3-2. But rather than us sit here and talk about a great performance by Alan Pardew's side, or rather how poor Liverpool were, luckily for the Reds, the VAR system has took centre stage and has slightly overshadowed their disappointing display, and has instead stole the spotlight away from West Brom in the process. This new system has been tested in a few countries and only recently has it made its first appearance in the English game, debuting in the Crystal Palace vs Brighton FA Cup third round tie and then being used in both legs of the Carabao Cup semi-final between Arsenal and Chelsea and in a couple of other games too. The system is set up to intervene on goals, penalties, red cards and a case of mistaken identity should it need be. And whilst it was mainly had a positive impact on the game, there have been maybe one or two occasions that stick out where the system wasn't used, when in hindsight, it probably should have. And many people have found minor issues with the system that need to be ironed out. An example of the VAR system not being used when probably it should have been used came in the Chelsea vs Norwich City game, which was an FA Cup third round replay. The game was into extra time when Willian was challenged in the penalty area by the Canaries' Tim Closer. Nothing was rewarded for Chelsea, however, and VAR wasn't even consulted, and despite Chelsea going on to win the game, Antonio Conte, the Blues manager, was still very upset that VAR wasn't used when it was there for that purpose. But within the English game, that is the only real major incident where VAR has failed to be consulted. And it has had more success in this country than failure. For example, Kalechi Iheanacho made history by being the first player to score a goal following VAR's interference after his goal for Leicester City against Fleetwood Town was originally not awarded. VAR continued its successful run this past weekend where it had a very busy evening during the game at Anfield between Liverpool and West Brom. The first incident of the night that brought VAR into play occurred when Craig Dawson's goal was ruled out by the system after Gareth Barry was judged to be offside, a decision that we can agree was the right call, and on the second occasion, Mohamed Salah was fouled in the penalty area, an incident I don't think the referee was going to review until Salah pleaded his case, and despite taking four minutes to make a decision, the right decision was eventually made, and Liverpool were awarded a penalty. VAR was then called into action for a third time when West Brom scored their third goal where there was a possibility of an offside call but again the system helped make the right call and the goal stood. So I know what you're thinking, what's the major issues here? VAR seems to be having more success than failure right? So what's the problem? Well, yes, it is having more success than failure. The success outweighs the failure. It, it, the evidence is there. But the problems that many people are having with this system is mainly a time issue. The penalty appeal for Liverpool aside, it normally takes about a minute or so to review the footage and make the call. But the incidents like the penalty decision at uh, the weekend will probably still happen in the future anyway. And when it does happen, it leads to another problem that many people are suggesting will happen and... It, uh, they are saying it will disrupt the flow of the game. That is debatable because in the game at the weekend, that didn't happen. The game was still fast paced and was still going on like usual. But a third issue that follows on from the two already stated issues already made is that people watching on TV know what is happening, but the people within the stadium aren't too sure until the outcome is made by the referee and he gives a very clear sign. So. What's the solution to these issues? Well, the timing issue can easily be sorted out by the referee going straight to VAR anyway. Rather than standing there and discuss it with the person watching the screen, they can go straight to the, to the screen themselves and reach a decision quicker. But remember, this isn't a foolproof thing. This isn't foolproof. This is still a referee's verdict on an incident. And as we've seen in, t in the past, 
many many fans and many pundits alike have disagreed over certain refereeing decisions so this isn't entirely foolproof and it just relies on the opinion of the man in the center of it all the disruption issue didn't really occur this weekend during the liverpool west brom game as it still flowed at a nice and swift pace but i can see that it may affect certain games more than others but there's not really a lot you can do about it should it occur because it's of the whole fairness thing. If you want it to be fair, you're going to have to use this system. And finally, the issue of having fans in a stadium not understanding the outcome of certain decisions. Maybe it's time referees had a microphone on them, like in the rugby, to announce what decision they've come to. Mainly for penalty appeals this. Um, he, ha he has to, Or maybe he has to have direct contact with the stadium announcer for them to announce it to the... Uh, players, fans, managers, coaches alike. But regardless, I'd like to see referees mic'd up anyway, so we can hear what they're saying to the players on the pitch, and I'd also like them to have better communication with everyone. Too often I find referees play the victim card with stupid decisions and things they may have said to people to cause certain responses. I'd like to see referees mic'd up like they have in the rugby. Yes, it may lead to more strong language being used and being heard on TV, but it might be entertaining, you know? As a way of further improving this system, I believe that going forward they should import a challenge system like they have in the tennis. Both teams at kickoff get three challenges each, and only the captain is allowed to approach the referee in order to use them. You lose your appeal? you lose a challenge. It's as simple as that. It's better than having this constant stop-start thing throughout a game that is action-packed and end-to-end, -end, where you can appeal for anything and everything, or have a number of players surrounding the referee in order for him to review a certain incident. This point is backed up more by the fact that I mentioned earlier that I don't believe the referee was going to review the foul on Mohamed Salah until the Egyptian made a case for it at the referee this past weekend. In games where the game goes into extra time, both teams can get an extra challenge should they need it. It's a better way of using the system without affecting the game in its entirety and also helps towards the, the disruption issue I mentioned earlier. So is VAR a good instalment to the game? Should the trial just end and try again somewhere down the line? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below guys on this, I'd like to hear your thoughts because again this is just one man's opinion on this. This is just my opinion. I'd like to know what you think down below. Thanks for watching and listening. Make sure to hit that like button on the way out if you enjoyed this video. And make sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And I'll see you again very soon.